Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Custom Culture Broadcast, brought to you by Old School Rods and Car Culture Lux Magazines. We are sitting here in beautiful Buda, Texas at Murfo's Rod and Custom Shop with the man right here. Murfo, how are you, sir? What's happening, Deuce? Man, I'm doing well, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing great. Good, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It quit raining. It did quit raining, and it's a little chilly for Texas right now, but not bad. So I think it's comfortable. It's okay. It's a very crisp morning. A crisp morning. It's 30 <laughs> degrees, yeah. That's a good way to put it. It's yeah, crisp. It's crisp. But clear. But it's, uh, and clear. Yeah. And we're also sitting here with Miss Colette. How are you, ma'am? Hey, Deuce. Hey. Hey, Deuce. Hey. <laughs> hey, Miss Shelby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are y'all doing? Good. How are you? I am well. I am well. I'm glad to be glad to be back on the show, man. This is my highlight of every week. Yeah, we is have, coming here and doing this stuff, man. I love it. Some it's, pretty cool stuff to talk takes about Takes away today. from all the rest of the crap. We have some great stuff to talk today. We have a incredible car builder who, in my opinion, has, has gone back in time and done really cool, crazy stuff, kind of looking stuff from like the 60s and whatever, and the from old TV shows and what whatnot. And it's Paul Bacon from Custom Works over in the UK. Paul, okay. you I'm right here. Oh yes, I'm here. Yeah. Good man. I, how, how are you, you sir? I, I, I'm really good. I, I can't believe you're saying that it's a crisp, cool morning there in Texas. You, you should be, you should be here now. It's like a freezing cold middle of the night. How, how cold is it, man? It's cold. You know, it's around freezing sort of thing. Probably yeah. a little bit below. So, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Very. It's, it's, it's always cold here. It's always cold, dark, and grey. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's in northern England. Sounds like Seattle. I, I don't. I don't know if you guys are like us. You know, Celsius, Fahrenheit. I don't know how that jam goes, no, but like Celsius. it's like thirty degrees in the morning right now. That's about the same. Work, yeah. About the same. They're at zero for them is thirty-two degrees for us. Okay. So yeah. We're close. So we're both freezing. Oh really? Oh, it's, oh it works. What? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're pretty close then. We're pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's that time of year. It's almost winter here. February. I mean, it's cold yeah, I'm, for I'm, 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 Texas. Yeah. It is cold, cold for Texas. Yeah. Yeah. For Texas. Yeah, cold for Texas, not cold for most of the rest of the country. It's right. a lot colder than we are, but cold, cold for Texas. Well, it was a quick shift, you know, from 111 oh to two weeks of, of 70 to 30. So, right. you know, I guess that was fall in wow. there at some that's point, it, two weeks right. of fall. Texas. And uh, that's Texas, though. But, you know, man, here it can change every day, like four or five times over. You got to have a full wardrobe, like everything, every type of clothing that you might need from shorts to sweatshirt, like every day. It's kind of like we're. we're you gotta, you gotta have it. You've got to have everything. You, you, get, yeah. you get in the workshop and you've got to be well wrapped up. You've got to have the heat on. You know, maybe some insulation in there. You know, am I am I just coming on and being like the the, the quintessential British person just talking about the weather? I just <laughs> yeah, right, right. What have I done? Yeah. And no, no, no it was us. We did. We did it to you, though. <laughs> yeah, no, we we did the weather thing to you. <laughs> that I think, is so, so funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah. You put it up in that intro. <laughs> so it's midnight there. It's what time, it, what time it, is it? It is. It's night time. Yeah, it's okay. like it, it's twelve o'clock. It's midnight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, thanks wow. for staying up for doing this. Yeah, I felt so bad. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, that's rad. Yeah. So, man, tell us about uh, what you've been up to. We we've, we've been checking out your Instagram. I've I've seen the stuff you've been doing on online for a while, and uh, I didn't. Wow, know. really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I look at a lot of car stuff. You know, I'm pretty simple though, dude. It's like all I, I do is like car stuff. So, so I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of one dimensional. It's like cars and cars and. Cars well, yeah, because I was, I was scoping you out, <laughs> and I saw your a picture of a truck that you're doing or or started now. Um, and I'm scrolling through, and all of a sudden I see a picture, but somebody else posted. It wasn't you. And I'm like, who did this? Yeah. And I'm like, Murph, look at my phone. <laughs> Do you see this? Like, there's so much inspiration here from, like, Barris to Bob Metz. Yeah. And I'm like, look at this. He's like, I've been following him for a long time. I'm like, I want to talk to him. It's very, very <laughs> like, much Barris. You know, Ed, Ed Roth and just out there, crazy, crazy, cool monsters type shit. And it's beautiful. I love it. I love every bit of it, man. Oh, so, so, you know, so, so, thank you so much. The, the, I think, you know, thing, things get pretty wild because I, I, I've got, you know, I've got no original tin here. I've got like, I've just got fiberglass and my imagination. So yeah. it's not like I've got any bits of any of the cars. Um, I've got to just go 
purely from my imagination. And you know, if you're going to make it from scratch, you might as well make it wild. Exactly. Yeah, right. it's very radical. That's, that's for sure. Words to live by, right there, man. Because your stuff is wild. I love the the bubble windows, and I, I love all of it, man. It's just it's cool. I was the first. I was the first in the UK to ever do a, a rock style bubble top, and like. You know, that was 10 years ago. And I, I just, I, I don't know what was wrong with the scene over here. Like, you guys had that back in the late 50s. And then, right. and then you know, what were, we, what were we doing? It took till the 2000s for me to do it. And I realized, you know, I, I thought, I want to be the first to do something. And then in Rodding and Customs, that's a hard thing to be the first. But I thought, you know what? I could do a bubble top car. I could be the first to do that. Yeah. And I, I looked around and I thought, yeah, no one's done it. So I'm going to take that. I'm, I'm having it. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I, and now that I'm really thinking about it, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of, like, you know, custom car culture stuff going on in Europe, but I haven't really, I guess, seen a lot from UK per se. Yeah, not so as, right? not as big. There, there's, yeah, that's true. There's, you, got, you guys do have, like, a cool, like, a uh, race over there, right? It's like a vintage race, but it's on, like, dirt or hills or something. Yeah, to... well, we are, we, yeah, we have a few sort of, few sort of sort of mad sort of really British sports like hill climbing uh -huh. and stuff like that, and yeah, but all of that you see, for me, all of that goes into a category called sport, uh -huh. and I'm a car guy, so I ain't even <laughs> looking over there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so, do, I'm not, I'm in no competition. <laughs> dude, do you guys have like a cruise night and stuff over there? Like, like, do you get to go cruise with your buddies with their with their sleds and their hot rods? No, no, not not really. There, there is some there is some cruise nights and stuff, but you know you don't get to cruise. You know there'll be like a few cars turn up, maybe fifteen, twenty cars. Uh -huh. I know down south from me, there's you know there's bigger stuff, but it's and it's always a mixture of cars. You know you'll get like you'll get every type of car there although there's the only real split is between you know like the modified sort of jdm sort of thing and the more old school rods and customs but rods customs low riders all lumped in together yeah yeah well it's a bit, you know, it, it, yeah but that's it's very inclusive but it's sort of gotta be <laughs> well that's yeah. okay though i mean at least you've got something right yeah. exactly. it's like yeah. you know it's like you're not the only one i guess i mean that's good and and uh, I'm oh, curious. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. When when you get done with this um, truck that we've been following, the one that that Colette started to talk about, are you uh, are you planning to bring it to the states? No, you know what? It's, that that truck is not actually it's not my truck, sadly. Ah. I'm building it for someone else. Okay. <laughs> but it, it came in, and uh, I'd I'd been building like a, a fake Ford F1 with a fiberglass body over a London taxi chassis. And I was just turning those out to make some money through the pandemic. And then I got a phone call and, uh, and the guy said to me, I want to go, I want to go like full Roth on one of your trucks. Yeah. And okay. I want it to be able to, he, he's got like a 60 style chop bike. Sure does. And yeah. that truck can pick, it, it picks the bike up off of the floor on fully remote control. The whole back of the truck opens up <laughs> all on actuators. And it lifts the bike off the ground and puts it on the back. Sweet. And so he cool. said, <laughs> so awesome. He, he said, how, how do you feel about, you know, asymmetric? And I was like, wow, yes. I've, I've wanted to go asymmetric for a long time. And, uh, but, you know, I, I don't know why. I, I, I've not done it. And I was like, yes, let's do it. So then, then I had to do some asymmetric. You know what I mean? And it was like, well, right. well, how, how, how do you do it? Because you see it on all the 60s show cards and you think, well, it's easy. You just you do one side <laughs> one way and the other side the other right. way. But it, it's got to have a certain balance. Yeah, right. yeah it's got to have right. flow That's and it thing. does it's have to tie be. together. Yeah. And that other one looks cool with the, with the, just, the four lights on the one side, it's, man. It's, it's just a sick idea. Yeah, so you're <laughs> building this for a customer. Was this the customer's influence for you to build it this way? Or was did you get inspiration from other things you've seen? been built it, it's certainly certainly the styles just the, the, the you know the, the design of it is out of my mind he said could you do something asymmetric mm -hmm. and from there um i just i just looked at the front of the truck and i can <laughs> i can sort of just see it in my mind how it's going to go down you know i think yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do that you know and then with the slot that wraps 
wraps around the front fender. And then, obviously, I got a lot of inspiration from the Golden Sahara at the back. But right, I, yeah, I the twin fins. Yeah, oh, the twin fins. You know, you know the worst thing about the twin fins is you can't get the sander between the two fins. You got to sand in there all by hand. I nearly lost my fingertips doing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but worth it. It was worth it because it looks really good. It does. It just has a good flow to it. It actually, I like it. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I change things around. I do. I do a lot of. I, on my channel, I always say, I don't know if you've got the, I don't know if this is going to translate, but I always say, mock it up before you cock it up. Yeah. There you go. That, that translates perfectly. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> get it looking right, get it looking right, and then, and then make it, you know, make it solid, make it real, um, and then, you know, start from there. So I did a lot of that in the sort of, you know, run up to the final form of the, of, of, of the pickup sort of thing. And the other thing, the having no wheels on show as well, that's still a, you know, I'm like, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to pull that off. You know, there's going to be a lot of gold on this truck when it's finished. Oh, nice. A um, lot of sort of, a lot of real bling elements to it. So I'm just, I'm just hoping the whole thing comes off as, a, as one coherent thing, like it all came out of the same box. Do you, do you have the uh, the front wheels turning well between the skirts? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can, I can, I can get full lock to lock. And the go. other thing, you know, uh, a, a London, a London taxi as well has a um, an incredible steering lock. There's a there's a hotel in London. I think it's Dorchester, and it's got like a tiny sort of roundabout turnaround. And all taxis have to be able to make that. So the wheels almost go, you know, like to the side when it's on full lock. Yeah. The steering lock is incredible on them. So this thing should be able to, at full drop, get that full lock and swing the front end around like it's hovering on the spot, hopefully. so. That's what you used in there? Was from one of those taxis? Yeah, the whole shaft is from a London oh, taxi. Okay. In fact, the, and then the, door, well, the doors have been suicided. So the top of the door frames and the surround of the windscreen and the firewall, and then everything else is scratch built. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Awesome. Now, are you building for yeah. somebody who's local for you, or are they in the States here? No, no, no. He, 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 no. <laughs> He's more local than the States, but he lives, you know, sort of like two and a half, three hours drive away from where I live. Got it. Now, are there restrictions? Like, can you build anything you want out there? Or do they have, like, restrictions for your building? Yeah, we, we, we've got a lot of laws. So, That's what I thought, um, yeah. You know, like, I, 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 I couldn't start with, like, a, what would we say? We say monocoque. You know, like a car without a chassis. You can't cut those cars about. But the London taxi is really cheap. And it's got a, it's got a full chassis underneath it. So you can you can build whatever you want on that chassis, but then you've got to get it through an MOT, and the MOT is quite a that's, that's quite a strict yeah. test. And to get the headlights in this, they've got pop up headlights in the front fenders out of a is it you, a, a Mazda? I think you call them a Miata. Miata. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I pop the headlights up there. And that's meant to be a secret because I love, you know, um, when the pictures go up online, everyone's like, oh, you'll, you'll never be able to take that on the road. You can't just have four lights on one side. You know, there's laws, you know, there's laws. And I'm like, I've got it covered. I've got it You're covered. Like, I'm doing it by my laws out here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knew there was restrictions. So, yeah, that's why I asked. And it's pretty cool to know about the taxi body. So that's yeah. cool. That's, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that chassis, that chassis just buys you just so much, um, you know, design leeway. As long as you keep the two front axles and the chassis, you know, you, you we've got like this 12 point system, but you get well in on it. You know, it's, uh, you can get round the law. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, yeah. We, we try to do it over here too. <laughs> we can't get around the law. No matter how much you try to. Well, you know. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby's like, shh, shh, shh. Well, <laughs> nothing on record. Can't, can't nothing on record. We can't for, confirm or deny any yeah. said <laughs> discussion regarding that's laws for, and taxes. That's for all the listeners out there. You do the right thing. Don't okay, you. Hayes County is a lot easier than Travis and Wilco. We'll just that's say that. That's very true. <laughs> it's a lot easier out here. What's the what's like the biggest difference in like the car scene? Like you said, when you go to car shows, like it's just a little bit of everything, right? Instead of like here where it's just customs, just low riders, just hot rods. Like you said, it's more inclusive. Yeah, so does yeah. that mean like the people are like everyone's just stoked that you show up because it's such a small community compared to like U.S. car shows that are like you know thousands of people showing up. Oh, definitely. You know, we we've we've got we've got like the nationals but like two of the nationals at two different places and one you do get there's a lot of cars there but it's nothing like the us right. and mm -hmm. in the us as well your, your cars are valued um you know you've got you've got things like you know the golden sahara the i'm gonna i'm gonna get the pronunciation wrong here but the higher hatamark and the manton agramark and you know you've got sort of like a You've got like a classic custom scene almost, right? right. You know, like you've really cherished cherish the history of the hobby and stuff like that. And there's not so much of that here. It's just they're just, you know, they're they're like they're hot rods and customs. But I, you know, my opinion is, you know, they're they're really undervalued here. You never mm -hmm. get, you know, the money and the effort you put in, you'll never get that back. And uh, I don't know, it's just so much more mainstream in the US or. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how it seems to me. I've only ever been, I, I went to the Rockabilly reunion in Vegas about 14 years ago. Oh, <laughs> that's wow. the only US show I've ever been to. That's a good <laughs> show to go to. <laughs> if you're going to go to the show, man, that's a pretty good one to go to. Are you talking about the Hot Rod Supernationals? It was we do have, yeah. Okay, what, what, we feature in, that in, before, in the UK. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. like they only you, have you, two a year, like throughout the whole year. And yeah, just looking like looking at the imagery and stuff like here, you know, sometimes we'll have like more collected. Like I said, it's more like lowriders or you say like traditional hot rods, like you kind of there's more of a theme, but also like it's more accessible for us because they are American made cars, right? right? And parts and trim and trying to find stuff at a junkyard. But like we have a triumph right now that we're building in the shop and trying to find parts for that is insane. And if we have to return it and it has to go back internationally, oh, it's yeah. a mess. Like so I can imagine being on the flip side, like having an American car, you know, being oh. outside of the country like trying to find triumph parts for this thing is insane and it's like a tiny it's like a tiny miata yeah. like it's little bitty but trying to track down anything like steering box whatever like yeah yeah we, we have another here British though, car here, I, oh go ahead I, I i i i built i built a british custom over a car called a um uh, it's a standard enzyme which was a lot like a standard vanguard from 1958 and um and that was a nightmare I needed um, track rod ends on the steering, and it took me weeks to get them. I nearly had to have some cast and made. Because that's another thing, like, you can go out and buy panels for old cars. Here, the minute a car's about 12 years old, that's where it ends. And it's okay if you've got, you know, like a Volkswagen, like a Beetle, or, you know, a car that's really sort of sought after. But other than that, there is just no parts. There's no support at all. Mm. But then again, you know, if you're a hot rodder, you should always be able to get round that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I am most definitely not a restorer. I will, um, you know, if I can't get the bits, then that whole thing's going in the bin and I'll just fit whatever I can get. <laughs> like, I'm done. It work. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Moving on next. <laughs> I believe they refer to it as hot rod ingenuity. <laughs> hot rod ingenuity just rules the day. Parts yeah. or not, who cares? Right. You know, there's some over there that I can make that work. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, here, man, there's so much available, you know, um, even stuff that's really old. Oh, yeah. You know, you can somewhat try and track it down. We are having a little challenge with a one-off kind of one of so many. I'm looking at it right now, this 58 Dodge truck that we have here that we're doing, and it's been a little tough to get parts for, but we can get them. You can find them. It just takes effort. Tracking um, them down. Yeah. Well, yeah. also think of like how vast, you know, the U.S. is like from even in Texas, like oh. you can find insane parts. But like we have sources for this Dodge, um, like in Pennsylvania and all these random right. places like that'd be like 
the equivalent of France or something like, but even then, like it's so yeah, massive, yeah. there's so many more cars produced here that it's like, of course you're going to have this obscure trim for this 58 Dodge that we need, you know, just even like land mass wise, like right. it's crazy to think about that. I think it, you have got parts of your country that stay dry as well. Like here, we salt the roads in the winter. So everything, everything rots away. It's one, oh, one of the reasons rest. I build a lot in fiberglass because if you do get any original parts, you know, like, you know, once rust is in there mm-hmm. and you think this, this panel, I can, I can cut and weld it and I can fill it, but I know it will all come through. Um, you know, or the, the rust will come through. And Eventually. I know one of my friends built, yeah, my, my friend did like a 49 Merc, you know, Barish Chop and everything. And that car got like street parts and it, it wasn't garaged. And, and you know, everything started to go wrong with the bodywork because you know it, it, it had been in a dry state all its life it was imported to here and you know it's just not used to the you know just just the climate in this country is terrible if i build in steel the car is covered in rust before you finish building it even mm. in like i've got it i've got an insulated workshop with heating but still the That's dampness terrible. gets in there it's you know Whoa. Yeah. Really bad. They'd be buying it's, like rusty side you, by the gallons. And you, yeah, ju- you, just, ju- you just said it, Paul, for people who don't realize what it's like in that t- part of the world, in Ireland or Northern England or Scotland or wherever, where it is the damp yeah. that gets you. It's the damp. You know what I mean? Like, you. Yeah. It, it gets in everything. It Moisture in the, in the air. What? Yeah. But it's, it's just, not humid. No, it's no, no, it's wet. But it's not, even if it's not raining, the damp is there, like in the walls and in your sweaters. Your sweater weighs like, like yeah, yeah, a yeah. stone, you know, like 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 five just pounds heavy. because you yeah you shake it out and water just goes. It's not even raining. Wow. It just gets the damp and yeah. That's why wellies exist. That's why right. wellies exist. Yes. And, <laughs> and wax jackets. So keep, keep, keep. London fog the whole night. <laughs> London fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these things. It. It's so, how, it's so how it is. is. It it really is. It's it's like it's not even this like it's when it's falling out of the sky. It's just in the air yeah, all the time. And wow. you know, um, water. I I got I got to the point where I thought, you know what? I I need a car. I need a car that's as waterproof as a boat. So why don't I start building my cars out of like what you build a boat out of? <laughs> and that is that. And you know what? If, if it's good enough for Ed, if it's good enough for Ed Ross, it's good enough for me. There you there go. You go. It's like, Build a car and like rhino line every inside outside like every like build like an igloo right like like a cooler. It won't be yeah, pretty, but yeah, it actually is an igloo at that stage, right? Yeah, it's a rhino line and then fiberglass. You're good, right? It's not for off road. It's for London. So we can really call you the king of fiberglass <laughs> because not many people work with fiberglass out yeah, here. It's right. not it's not a thing. The child we had someone call the other day and he was like, "Hey, I need a fiberglass repair." And like, like it's what? not something we can't do, but it's just not common like right. fabricate all day all day it's going to be beautiful metal finished pretty but like to even yeah. that's a completely different way to yeah. approach building like fiberglass most, is not yeah. most people out here paul who deal in fiberglass are people who repair boats mm-hmm. you know or yeah, work, work, exactly. work and build yeah, yeah. bass boats or whatever they think just... of like f1 racing or something where you want to be lighter with like bikes too yeah. like it's for the weight but yeah. it's not essential you know it's not like the first material that you'd build a car out of so that's what not water. first yeah, we have had an occasional. It's, it's, it's very. I don't. I don't. None of my fiberglass is any lighter. You know, I, I do it like I do it four or five layers thick. All of my cars, you could like, you can walk over them, and nothing's going to dent or flex anywhere. They're like, There's they're no going to be there. around. You know, like yeah. when the when the sun goes supernova, there'll be bits of my car floating <laughs> through space. <laughs> oh my God. You know, like that. That. Like, like the He's plastic just being in the guys. ocean, it's just going to be there forever. <laughs> no rust here. Yeah. Yeah, Elon Musk. Come at me. I got no hey, rust. Hey, Elon is Musk it? is going to call you to build his rocket out of your face. No, for real. I'm going to call Paul. If I ever need a fiberglass <laughs> endeavor, I'm calling does, Paul. This sound Paul. like occasionally come out? It, 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 this yeah. Sun, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. The sun, the sun does occasionally come out, and then it's like really hot, and but it's still like muggy as well. Oh. Even when it's sunny it's just it's just it's draining it's with like you know yeah we, we we get the odd really nice day and like it's just like everyone goes crazy but yeah for, for the most time it is it's just it's just it's just dull and we've got really narrow bumpy roads and it's just i don't know 
I mean, you see a hot rod or a custom, it is like the sun's come out, you know, because yeah. they, they remind you of like, you know, the sun and cruising and, and the US and you see like a, an American car here and it is just like, it's like something from a different planet. Mm. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I have a buddy of mine over there in Scotland that has a 66 Mustang convertible mm -hmm. and he doesn't, he very rarely does he take it out, but boy, when he does, he can't go anywhere without everybody coming and see it. And I like that you know? big, beautiful American car. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a Mustang, so which is one of the smaller yeah. versions of an yeah. American car, but still over there, it's like, it's the business. It's the thing, you know? yeah. yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. Hmm. What about? Yeah, they just stand out. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely, definitely stands out. Any American car yeah. over in Europe or motorcycles or whatnot, mm -hmm. you know? Well, Oh yeah, you hear a Harley, you know. I know, like, I know we've got we've got like the, that we've got that Triumph and Norton sound, mm -hmm. and you know that that's a great sound. Uh, but you hear a Harley sort of thumping down the road, and instantly, I, I can I can tell that so I can tell a V8 or a Harley from like a mile away. It's just <laughs> like there's a guy near me who's got a Dodge Ram, like the V10 one, and uh, I, you know I, I I just know when he's got in it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like I can just I can just tell that sound from so far away. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful sound, man. Sometimes when I can't sleep, I'll yeah. put on a recording of a Harley going down the road. Just listen to that potato, 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 and take it off. That's like your song. Oh yeah, yeah, Sleepy yeah. Lullaby. Is a lullaby to go Some people night. listen listen to, to rain. I listen to Harley Motors go by. <laughs> what is? It's your white noise in the background. <laughs> <laughs> What's your what's your bike scene like over there? Is that a little more attainable? Yeah, there's there, there's quite a good scene. You know, like with bobbers and stuff mm -hmm. around the hot rod scene, you, you get a lot of that sort of thing. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not really into the bike scene though because um, you know I'm just I, I'm too much of an idiot to ride a bike. <laughs> oh <my laughs> you, you've got to know your limitations in life, and I'm, I'm a kind of a I'm kind of a daydreamy driver anyway, so, nice. you know, motorbike is, it's, it's just, it's just not where I should go if I want to live for much longer. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is hilarious. There's plenty of those in the US, you so gotta, you everyone be thinks immediately. <laughs> Too much of <laughs> so, so, like, um, this guy that's got the Dodge Ram, or, like, I guess any American car that's over there, is it, is it uh, difficult to get? an American car there, like in terms of registering or having it be legal? Uh, you know, if, if you've got the money, you know, you can just go on eBay and there's, there's a lot of American cars there. Um, and I think to win, there's a lot of companies that import them. So, you know, you can get them, but, but like, you know, the other day on Facebook, there was a, there was a shoe box for like, uh, it was like three and a half grand. So that's three, three, you know, three and a half thousand dollars. So it would be even cheaper in pounds. If that was for sale here, that guy'd have like, you know, two hundred people turning up at his door to buy it. I, I, I sent him a message and, you know, asked him what the postage would be, but you know. <laughs> yeah. He didn't yeah, want to post it. He didn't want to post it to the UK. About, about <laughs> But it's just too damn but, expensive. It's so expensive. I mean, it seems like we have a fair amount of like you know British cars over here. We do, we do. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but newer ones. I mean, they've been selling British cars over here since like the '60s. Yeah. Where Jaguars and MGs and all those you know different you know Rolls Royce. I mean, he's got to be one of a kind building what he's building that's out there. That's what I'm saying. Right. I mean, he's building his one. I, I mean, do you have a shop full, or are you just a one person? Are you by yourself at the shop, or do you have people helping you? Because how are you getting all these? I have. Uh, there, 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 there's, there's me, and then on Thursdays and Fridays, I have my friend who I always call Hot Rod Building Legend Lee Cox, because he's built <laughs> more hot rods than anyone I've ever met. And he can just do wiring like, I don't know, he can just wire a car like it's nothing. He's just got a big fistful of wires, and he knows what they're all going to do. And Every day I'm amazed. <laughs> but he, can, but he, he doesn't do body work. He doesn't do body work, and... He claims he's allergic to Bondo dust, so I have to blow everything <laughs> down with the airline. Yeah, that's a good one. Because sometimes it's, it's deep like snow, you know. It's like... Oh. <laughs> I kind of like your friend, the wiring guy. Exactly. Yeah, he's kind of fun. I'm allergic to that. I can't be around. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> 
That's good. He really, he, he really is. He's, I, I, I watch it. I call him the Messiah of Wire. Oh my god! That's a, that's a T-shirt right there. We gotta make some T-shirts. Yeah. The Messiah of Wire. A little cartoon with just like all these fists full of wires. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You gotta make some stickers and when he shows Masaya. up. Just throw one on his back. So bumper. it's just you and your wiring guy who's not gonna be around when you're doing your Bondo dust because he's allergic. <laughs> yeah, so all, 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 yeah, all, all the bodies, all, all the body work. See, and yeah, most of the fabrication. That, that's, that's just me. Wow. Nice. Wow, wow. Yeah. So how, Even, did, how did you I, get I, into it? I, I did, um, yes, yeah, and I. About sort of 15 years ago, I'd, I'd read magazines, I'd built loads of lowrider bicycles and stuff. I'd, I'd made a lot of stuff and, uh, you know, more sort of artsy sort of things. And I thought, I'm, I'm going to build a car. So I was waiting to have somewhere to build it, the money to build it and the time. And uh, of course, that's never going to happen. You've got to like grab the bull by the horns and just do it. So mm-hmm. I built the car called Dualitron on my front drive, um, I used a, I don't even know if you have this car over there, a Citroen BX, which is like a five door family fridge. hatchback. Yeah. And at the time, you could cut the roof off a car and that's got Citroen's like up and down suspension. So I thought this is the cheapest way I can get like a sort of an air ride sort of thing, base. And then I just built the car over it. And that was like, that had a 1.6 engine, it was front wheel drive. And I thought, I'm going to build it. I'm never going to go to any shows because, you know, they'll, they'll like drum me out the minute I'm there because I've got a front wheel drive custom that's based on a Citroen. <laughs> and then I went, to the sho- I went to the shops in this thing, you know, it's, like, it's really big, big things, you know, things crazy. I went to the shop and someone took two photos of it in the car park and it sat, you know, it sits on the floor. The car's still around today. And... It went on to a British site called Rods and Sods, and then someone posted it on the ham. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, you got yeah. on the that, ham. Wow. That's awesome. And then, and then, that, and then that, that was it. I was, I was just like, I was inundated. I think that post went to like 16 or 17 pages. And, uh, you know, obviously, there were, there were some people, and this happens with a lot of my cars, and it's happened with the, the asymmetric truck, happens with that people saying oh this car should be crushed you know steel is real and this ain't this is fake and you can't have a front wheel drive custom and all of this sort of thing and i and that's when i realized like um you've sort of sort of got to roll with that sort of thing and my 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 motto now is you know you know if everyone likes it you've probably not built a hot rod or a custom have you, you know, <laughs> you've got to if it doesn't piss someone off <laughs> yeah, the you're doing something right, I say. Uh, you're going to have good criticism, bad criticism, but somebody's talking about it. You're doing it. That's it. Like you're you've heard doing that a it. Times with, with customs where, you yeah, should, that, that's an original. You can't, you can't chop it. You can't do that to the original. All of a sudden, you take the top off and you lower it and you shave the the handles, and that same person yeah. who's pitching about it being original looks over and goes, "Okay, that's pretty. Look, that's, that's pretty badass, right there." <laughs> there, <laughs> bad. there was a LaSalle around where the guy wouldn't sell it because it was he wanted to chop it. Yeah. 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 And no. Now this man is trying to sell the shell, like trying to sell the sell the body, but it's like people have conditions when they sell the cars. You know, they're like a sentimental attachment. It's like giving their baby away. Exactly. But it's like when that person has that in their possession, like let their creativity, like it's their yeah. vehicle now, I right? You do what you love, and if you're loving what you're doing, then you're doing it right. I love yep. the idea. You know. If you pissed everybody off in town, brother, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> yep. You know, you're looking <laughs> yeah. over, and you got these old guys yeah, go bitching. This is what I guess. You know, hot, hot rods and customs are the punk rock of the car world. Yeah. Not everyone True. likes punk rock. <laughs> well said. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No. I'm you're not, right. You know. Every, 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 Everyone loves a Bentley Continental, but you know that 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 just ain't that's just not my kind of car. <laughs> no, I'd love right. to see a Bentley Continental though, chopped and dropped, and, you know what I mean? Shaved <laughs> handles on the thing. Right. You know He's like, mean? give me a second, <laughs> <laughs> give me a couple months. I got this. yeah. <laughs> the best part is every, everybody out there would say you're crazy for doing something like that, but you're the one who does it. 
you know, you get the one of one, which and is awesome. And then there's his name, Paul, Paul, right. Paul, exactly. Paul. Exactly. That's like his car, his car, But isn't that being a creative is going against the norm? That's right. literally, because if we were all the same, we all just like be pretty wore boring. white shirts with black a, pants yeah. every day. What a <laughs> boring, boring world this boring would world. be. Exactly. So we need the extremes. Like we need the yeah. creativity and the cars and the diversity. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was really cool too to see like this truck, a lot of the inspiration that he got from it. With right. the fins and the, the molding it, yeah. of the Continental kit and the front end. I mean, it was just so much of those legendary builders like yeah. Barris and Gene and, you was, know, Bob yeah. and just all these people. It was wow. really cool. It really caught my eye and I had to share it. I was like, sharing. <laughs> Everybody's going to see it. Well, yeah, when, when, when you shared it, I was like, wow. <laughs> no, I just, I know it's great. And people wanted to talk about it. And some people were like, nah, nah, nah. And some people were like, yeah, that's awesome. Keep it going. And so it was really cool. I was glad. And then I was like, I got to find this guy. <laughs> and then there he was. I was I like, remember, yeah. When you show it to me, you go, you go, dude, check this out. I go over and go, oh, look at the back end. So... Ooh, look at the lights <laughs> on the front of that thing. Oh, look at the skirts on that thing. Oh, hey, this thing is It that. just kept going. It just yeah. didn't stop. And then when you saw the front, you were like, there's more in the back and it just <laughs> it was just all you know and i was like wow i just really wanted to pick his brain and here we are we're picking his brain Pretty yeah cool. yeah pick pick away you know <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's it's amazing it's amazing for me that that someone in the u.s is even interested in what i'm doing here because like to, to to me like you know the u.s is just a it's just a you know like the mecca of this sort of thing and for me to be you know, with none of the parts and just books, magazines. And I've got to say, you know, like YouTube and stuff has been a, a real help um, in, you know, just seeing what's going on, what's gone on in the past. I've got, I've got some copies of car crafts from the 50s and stuff. I've got about six or seven copies of that. And they're like, they're everything, you know, right. they, they give me so much inspiration. But for, for you guys to have like reached out to me, it's like, wow. <laughs> No, that's awesome. Like, but we love creative. Like, we love creativity and custom. And thank God for custom cars. I don't know what it's like in 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 England in terms of like the new cars. But man, here in the states, there's like nothing out. Like, there's no cars on the road that have any like design or whatever. Like, I can't no even tell the. Di- I, I don't design, follow or yeah. know new cars at all. I don't know anything about them. But I know they all look the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what really like yeah, one brand yeah. from the next anymore, you know? Like, what's the difference? Well, everyone's just copying each other in a sense. Like, Kia wants to look like Range Rover and all this other stuff, you know? Like, it's just kind of blending after a while. Uh, uh, yeah, everything looks the same. No, so for us, man, like in, in our lane, like doing um, magazines and so on, it's like we, we just we pick up on it. Like, I, I was telling you, dude, like, I've seen your, your stuff online for a while, you know? Like, we just, my eye like, gra- <laughs> gravitates to custom, so. To me, it's cool. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's like not everybody does have the same taste. So, you know, people are going to hate or say this or that. But, you know, like, fuck them, whatever. Like, let's just build. Exactly. But they're talking. That's all that's that matters. <laughs> and and, and, and all, those, all those guys that are poo-pooing your cars or your ideas, just say, hey, put your money where your mouth is. You come build one. Yep. Yeah. In and, fiberglass. Yeah. In fiberglass. Bring it. And watch those wankers go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Okay. They, 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 there's, a, there's a thousand people, you know, I mean, they, they're, sitting, they're sitting at their laptops, criticizing yep. Keyboard warriors, cars. that's what yeah. we call like, them. They, they've, never even, they've even, never even changed a wheel when they've got a flat. Right, 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 Probably right, right. Like, hey, like, well, where's your car? Exactly. You got something to say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My key is in the driveway, thank you. Yeah, 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 it's chopped. <laughs> yeah, we were we were at a show one time, and and there was a guy there that was poo pooing some of Murpho's stuff, and I just looked over. I go, whoa, 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 where's your car? And the guy looked at me, and his eyes almost popped out of his head because he didn't have a car because right. he can't build a fucking car. And if you can't build a car, you're welcome to your opinion. But go sit in front of your fireplace on your computer again. Don't be talking shit at the show in front of guys who can build cars. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. Everybody's allowed to have their opinion. Of course, sure. You can talk, say what you got to say and but if do you're what you do, talk but. Shit, you better have something put them up man you know build your own car right well what's cool too is to see the way that like he's regurgitating I think like it his inspiration them even like, to go bigger and better yeah. like keep talking because you're gonna make me keep going yeah because like <laughs> like you said taking in like Barris yeah. and all these other inspirations but like his upbringing and like the way that he views cars is probably different than the way Murph does or Bella right. or whoever right so right. then it's like it's almost like your own like love language and car building right exactly. it's gonna be yeah, like different ingredients different inspiration it was like, cool to see the inspirations but yeah. taking it into his own version 
decisions. Exactly. I mean, this thing's going to pull in a bike. Like it's just, it's all over the place, but it's, it's really cool to see those inspirational Mm -hmm. touches, you know, like from those people. So it's cool. Well, like Chuki last week, like her inspiration was kind of all over the place. Right. And she was like, I see in color and we're like, what like mind mean? blown yeah. like but it's amazing wow, to see what yeah. she produces like yeah. because of that right so yeah. like her perspective is what creates this beautiful thing that's different but like car building that's kind of where he's at right yeah. like it's so and awesome. the, the, one of the coolest things paul about, about dealing in fiberglass is you literally can build if you come up with an idea and you write it on paper you can make that thing no matter how yeah. wacko and crazy it is i mean we've all seen the cars with the you know the German helmet and the and the the Munsters car with the with the the coffin and I mean all the, all the b- tons of cars that are out there, you can build anything in your imagination and what you're doing, man, is just it's rad, especially where you're at. You know, like you said, and definitely I'll be in fiberglass. I don't know anybody who's yeah. Doing that. That's yeah. I said. Everyone I know. I, is I, 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 I always I come up with an idea and I just think I've just got to make like the stuff underneath the paint to hold the paint up now. And then, <laughs> you know. Tell them, Paul. Tell them. <laughs> I, 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 sculpt, I sculpt it all out in styrofoam and then I, I refine it down using a uh, plaster and then go over with the fiberglass then get all that junk out from underneath. That's almost like and then building. I just grind and grind and smooth it down. You know, it's, uh, it's itchy, it's, it's dirty, it's dusty, but... I, I, you know, I, I love the build. The actual cars, when they're finished as well, the minute the car, if, if I'm not building someone else, if it's one of my cars, like uh, with Cosmotron and Automatron, the minute they were finished, I just want to sell them because I've already thought of a better idea mm-hmm. for a better car. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> He's like, on to the next. Yeah, I, I love that. That's it. That, that's it. I, just, I, I, I really, I really, really love the build. And I, I only ever, if I'm taking the cars as well, I'll only ever go to a show once. I'll go to one show. I'll go to, you know, probably take it to four or five shows, but I'll only ever go to those shows once in one season and then I'll sell the car. Wow. Because that's it. I'm, I, I'm done. And it's always like, oh, you like this. You, you want to see what I'm going to do next. You know, it's, it's my 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 thinking, and I also I'm I'm very sort of um I'm motivated by bitter disappointment as well because every time I finish a car, you know, you look over and you think, I could have done that better. Mm-hmm. You know, this bit could have been better. This bit, well, right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's sell this. I'll start again. The next one, I'll get everything right. And of course, I'll never get it all right. So I'm just going to be building cars and trying to get that perfect car forevermore it's like the endless pursuit of perfection yep. i was thinking about like how he's saying like cars don't really stick around for like 12 years and there's no parts and mm-hmm. i was thinking like back like yeah how, how how there's these people over here i'll call them purists and they get all into like whatever yeah. packards or original uh, and i'm not trying to pick on anybody nah. you know but whatever but like it's like yeah they're like going to like originality and everything and i was thinking about dude like i chop my chevrolet and i start cruising around and i run into these people like you know, like, okay, so for like, like, like everybody's into something different. They'd be like, well, you chopped this car, like you ruined it. You ruined know, like it. this car is destroyed or you oh, did this my. car, you know? And I think to myself, you know, like, what the fuck? Like my car was sitting in a field in Utah for 20 years. <laughs> I was helping yeah. it out. Not running. Like, <laughs> and then I built it and it's got a new life. I'm like, how did I ruin this? I mean, how, how can you but possibly say that if I cut somebody's car, you ruin it? Like, you, you don't. Because he's getting so excited. Yeah, like, look, I chopped it. Sorry. None of those guys dragged it out of the field. That's, right. That's, you know, yeah, it was there yeah. for yeah. plenty of time. I didn't take it out of a museum. Say, yeah. yeah, and then chop it. And then. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was talking about. Before. That's what I was talking about before, Paul, about like the, the guys with the, the old rolls. You know, like there's guys going to be out there going, you can't touch it. It's perfect the way it is. And then you turn around and go, man, this car was sitting maybe maybe who knows what up in the the highlands of scotland for 30 years in a barn this thing hasn't ran it was rusted yeah. i fixed it i chopped it i you know yeah. dropped it i shaved it it looks crazy now because i want it to look this way it looks Brought the it way i life. want it it's not your car yeah. you don't like it go fuck yourself this you is know, my car. He, with the with the classic scene and like the purists and stuff Oof. they say you know they're looking at your chevy saying you ruined that it's not the last one on earth. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. No, no. <laughs> There's enough of Chevrolet to go around. That's exactly right. You know, 
I, I see I see a fully restored car. I just I just want to cry because that that's a lost Crossmoor hot rod. <laughs> I'm sure. I like, yeah, I agree. I like the way Paul thinks. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a lot of You're guys flipping just it right the way around. Accessorize, but I want to I want to cut it up. Then yeah. Chop that top, baby. But it's really hard yeah, when yeah. you do meet those purists, though, because you don't know, and you're like, "Hey, look what I did," and they're like. I can't believe you did it. I love, yeah, and I wasn't too long ago. I love to see a car that is absolutely perfect. It, it, like, it's literally showroom, you know? There's something to be said about that when you're looking at it, like a 36 Packard or something like that, where you go, okay. whoa, this thing is awesome, and it's beautiful, so, but... So there is a particular challenge to this, though. Like, if you have, like, a really old car, like, we're doing this 31 Packard that's out here, and it's, like, original, you know, and it's, like, yeah, it's yeah. a challenge, you know? I mean, to get it to where it truly is... You know, uh, just like off of the showroom floor and to like every little detail and find these parts. I mean, that's a challenge. There's yeah. there's a, a challenge to chase perfection, kind of like, you know, you're trying to do when you're when you're building something that's scratch built. But it's not as cool. No, that's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> beautiful. No, no, no. It's, it's beautiful the way it was built. But man. It doesn't have a chop top. It's not a drop. But you know what? People forget, too. People were doing this in the 50s. They were buying mm-hmm. brand new right. cars to be an individual. Like, sure. this is Hello not there. a new concept, yes, right? right? This yeah. is not yeah. new. But people are like, oh, oh, oh. Alexander Brothers. We've been doing this forever. One of right. the best stories the we ever had on the show was Keith Dean talking about his dad, Dick Dean, <laughs> where he took his wife. They literally picked the car up from the showroom, like drove it off the showroom floor. And she, he goes, they're going, okay. She goes, we going home? He goes, no, we're going to the shop. She's going, what? He goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the top. And she goes, Dick, there's not five miles on this car. And he looks at her and he goes, yeah. And she was so mad at him for two weeks. And then two weeks later, he comes home with the car all done up. And she's like going, oh, my gosh, that car looks amazing. That's so good. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you had a good train. point, yeah. guys. You had a were, good point, yeah. Those were guys who didn't even, I mean, they're the ones, the pioneers. They, pioneers. They, it's yeah. never been done before. And he's just thinking, I'm going to chop the top. And she's yeah. going, what does that mean? I'll just wait. <laughs> Lops it off. What are you doing? And yeah. then all of a sudden, she's the final product. But that was a perfect example. Like the well, that, rock yeah. of yeah. You know, the car scene. And that's a great way to put it. Yeah. And that, but, but back, back in the day as well, you know, a lot of the time it was referred to, in, you know, with, with, with custom, custom with a K, mm-hmm. was, was referred to as restyling. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't even like it was, yeah. you know, like, you know, just ch- chopping the roof of a Merc, lowering the roof line. You know, probably the rest of the car would stay pretty much stock, but they just they just tweak, you know, a lot of um, early Barry stuff. He's just tweaking a design and probably bringing it back to what it looked like on the, you know, like when it's a prototype, mm-hmm. when it's the artist right. impression. And you see those, and then you see the car for real when it comes out. It's always disappointing, but they were just <laughs> taking it back to the, the, the purest of the design. That's how I saw, you know, the very early days of it sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. 100. 100. <laughs> well, man, so what, what do you think um, is going to come of this truck then? This guy that you're building it for takes it a couple hours away and... Will he be like you know cruising it like like daily and trying to have fun with shows it or it. shows or, or what, yeah, what do you think? Se- se- seriously, this, this is this car's going to be his daily driver. Yeah. Wow. When that nice. when that car's finished, he 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 lives by the sea and he lives down south, so he'll probably get some sunny days cruising along the seafront. You know, like like a quarter of an inch off the ground because that car will sit flat on the floor yeah um and yeah he's gonna use it and he's gonna take his motorbike round and hopefully he'll go to shows you were saying earlier about bringing it to the u.s right 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 it's always always been my dream like particularly when i had the bubble top car i always wanted to drive it down the strip in vegas yeah it's just like that's exactly where that's going. Well, I would love like to see that yeah. truck driving down the strip of Vegas. Yeah. That for fact. The bubble car. Yeah, it, it, both. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> Bring them all. That'd be really cool. <laughs> Do you know what? I've, I've, got, I've got more chance of getting one of them cars on the moon than getting it all that way. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't even know where to start. SEMA. <laughs> it's so far. Yeah, there you go. SEMA. SEMA. Start approaching SEMA. Tag them and everything and be like, this is what I'm building. This is what I'm building. You want it there. You know, it'd be a really cool truck to take to Japan. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Moon Eyes. Oh, man. Moon Eyes is where it's at. 
one day. It's on my bucket list. The, I hope they check it. Don't you think, don't, don't you just think that? Their minds to pain. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we're manifesting this for you. We're no. putting it out into yeah, the world. Yeah, in the universe. Yeah. We want to <laughs> see this truck. Fiberglass, fiberglass, fiberglass. Come to the U.S. Hey, <laughs> hey, Paul, if people want to get a hold of you or um, touch base by teach, you know, merch or whatever, or talk to you about you building one of their cars, how can they do that? Right, so on Instagram, I'm Automatron4. <laughs> I'm going to have to spell that. A U T. U-T-T-O-M-A-T-R-O-N, or Tomatron 4. But mainly, I'm on YouTube, Paul Bacon's Custom Works. Okay. And that's custom and with I'm a K. Also, I'm on... You got cust- it. Oh, custom always with a K. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's another t-shirt. You have so many slogans. I'm telling There's you. so many slogans. We got to get that one made for the wire the guy. The wire guy. Yeah, I think, that I think, great. I'm yeah. on Facebook as well. I think I'm just Paul Bacon on Facebook. You know, like the whole social media thing has it, um, come. I, I, I'm a late adopter. You know, it's not that, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a sort of tech kind of guy. <laughs> it's like, well, we're following you. I'm yeah. following. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're all on this. I think you're really good at it, Miss Shelby. Yeah. But I think the rest of us are kind of in that <laughs> same boat where uh, I know myself and Murpho. Couldn't give a shit if it wasn't for this business, you know, and the stuff. I couldn't care less if I was ever on social media. You follow back. You yeah. hit the follow back button. I don't. I don't. You didn't That's want to grow button. up to be a podcaster no. when you were a <laughs> little boy. <laughs> we little lad. When you're a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Paul, this has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, man. Yeah. And you've got to let no. us know when that truck is done. Please, please do. Because I want to see that thing up in lights. Yeah. I want to see it in the magazines. I want to see that truck everywhere. Because that's, I want to see Paul Bacon Custom Works everywhere, dude. You're, you're doing amazing stuff. Oh, thank, thank you so much. And, and you know what? I, on, on, on my channel, I show everything that I do. And I swear, anyone can do it. You know, you've just got to get in there, get your hands dirty, build a custom. If you've got the parts or not, it doesn't matter. Just build a custom and then freak the squares out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't, don't mind the squares. You can talk yeah. about it, be about it. Fistful of wires. That's right. With the fistful of wires. <laughs> yeah, one, one of these days when I'm back there, Paul, I'm coming up to your place and I want to take a picture with you, me, and the dude with the wires, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just, oh, yeah, the Messiah with wire, hot rod. Hot Rod Building legend Lee Cox. There you there go. You go. <laughs> right on. Well, here's a big shout out to Hot Rod Legend B- Lee Cox, man. We appreciate you, buddy. Who can wire anything, you know? <laughs> In a yeah. to bond he, can. he can. He can wire anything. Nice. <laughs> so cool. Well, hey, Paul, this has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, sir. We really appreciate you. And you keep doing what you're doing over there, buddy. I will. I'll keep posting up. If you're going to keep looking, I'll keep posting up. And it's been an absolute honor. And this has been, yeah, what a, you know, just what a great time. Great to talk to other car people. Always good. And I'm just honored that you're over there, I'm over here, and, and you know what I'm doing. So. Right on. Thanks <laughs> so much, Paul. <laughs> great to meet you, buddy. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. Great to meet you. Thanks, Paul. Man, guys, what Thanks a great a show. Uh, yeah. All right, take care, buddy. Thanks take for reaching buddy. out. Uh, bye. Okay, then. I'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah. Cheerio. Toodle pip. All the best. See, see you, bye. <laughs> that was a good show. What a great show. He what a great, great dude. The one-liners. He's, like, he's yeah. so excited to talk about his no, stuff, yeah. though, which is great. Yeah. I mean, th- like you know, we always say, there's passion. Everyone, man, that kid is You can passionate. feel the passion yeah. Yeah. through his I voice. I love it. I yeah. got chill, man. He's just a fun guy, and he's building <clears throat> fun toys, you know? Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. Out of fiberglass. Out of fiberglass. At that. Thing. He's like, I built it, I drove it, I took it to the show. Later, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yep, then I sell it and do another one. I, you gotta love I that, love man. It. Yeah, so that's good. awesome. Well, hey, what a great show tonight! Been fun. I can't wait till the next one. We're gonna be going. Oh, we have a thing coming up. I don't know if it's open. It comes out before it is February. What here? Eleventh. Eleventh. Here at the shop, we have our own show and our own. We're gonna. There's goodies here. There's what is there? Music here. There's it's the next round here. of the Murphos Cruise In, and that's we're cruising. doing another. Um, the workshop, what is it? The um, 
uh, Hot Rods and Honeys. Hot That's Rods and it. Honeys. Lola shoots out of That's Houston, right. Texas. Yeah, man. Um, side note, I think that was our first international guest. Yeah. 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 Three seasons, but we're doing we're open to it. So this is our yeah, it was, I don't yeah. we were dealing with the phone before. Yeah, we've this never had the, the well, that, I know that's what I was like. We have this is our fourth yeah. episode, right? I don't know. Season it's three? the f- one, uh, season, season three, three. Season, three. Three. season three, episode. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for season three. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one, season, two, I think four. it's fourth episode. I think it's the fourth. I think of three. Season oh, I can't say what it is yet because we haven't said goodnight. Oh. Miss no. Shelby, goodnight. Thank you so good much night. for being Thank you. You too. Hey. <laughs> hey, D. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Murpho, always. Always. <laughs> this is freaking getting fun. Well, it's always been fun. but oh, man, yeah. that It's getting more show. fun. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have more fun. people. More fun. better. Yeah, mo, mo better. Mo better. More better. <laughs> yeah. More better. <laughs> This hey. podcast mobile. Listen, thank you, sir, for having us on again. Exactly. Well, hey, for Double Deuce and everyone else on the show, man, we appreciate you all listening to the Custom Culture Rodcast brought to you by Old School Rods and Car Code Selects Magazines. We are out. <laughs>